on the hunt for a stylish, versatile, premium estate that doesn't have a German badge. This is the Genesis G70 shooting brake and today we're going to explore this car in detail to find out if it's exactly what you're looking for. Now then, we know that the term shooting brake is used loosely and inconsistently by many manufacturers. Many would claim that in order to qualify as a shooting brake, the vehicle needs to have a more prominent swooping roof line than the normal estate and two doors. But as you can see, this car brakes convention with four doors, much like the Mercedes CLA shooting brake. What are we to make of this then? However you define the G70 shooting brake, it was designed and developed exclusively for the European market as a more practical and versatile version of its saloon sibling, all without compromise to the driving experience. So is this the case? Is this estate more than just a regular G70 with extra space? and is it better than premium estate offerings like the Audi A4 Avant, BMW 3 Series Touring and the Mercedes C-Class Estate. We'll find out all about that and so much more in today's in-depth review. I loved the design of the G70 Saloon, but in my opinion, this looks even better. Based on the same platform as the Kia Stinger, the design of this shooting brake is the result of close collaboration between the Genesis engineering teams in South Korea and Germany, resulting in what is a uniquely Korean car that makes a bold statement against German equivalents. And I feel that they've achieved that very well with eye-catching design features like these front LED quad lamps that have people turning their heads as you mosey on downtown and pull up in the supermarket car park and they stretch out like the wings on the Genesis emblem. I like the dramatically long bonnet with those sharp creases contrasted against the short low overhang just reinforcing that dynamic appearance but perhaps what first caught your eye is this rather imposing crest grille again borrowing design elements from the Genesis emblem. With the Sportline trim you get a dark chrome effect on this as you can see with this model. Overall the design of the front end is near identical to the regular G70 saloon but nothing needed to change here. As a result it's one of the most attractive premium estates on the market, much more appealing than the 3 Series Touring which is starting to show its age. The car's coupe like design is more evident from this side profile where we can spot a main difference with that G70 saloon and that's the more gently swooping roof line as it extends backwards towards the bulky rear spoiler. Other than that, it's pretty similar to the G70 Saloon. The side window profiles are exactly the same and it also has the parabolic line which you'll find across Genesis models in the UK lineup. This starts from the front here and the LED headlamps and extends all the way across the vehicle to the rear creating an athletic and aerodynamic look. 18 inch wheels come as standard though if you opt for this Sportline model you get larger 19 inch alloys which have been equipped with the Pilot Sport 4S tyres and those have been tuned specifically with this estate car to enhance grip, ride comfort and efficiency. You also get a nice dark chrome design to the alloys and red Brembo brake calipers. Those nicely complement this Havana red metallic colour, one of 12 exterior body colours available. The solid paint is outer white which is perhaps a little bit too similar to the Alpine white you get as standard with the 3 Series Touring. If you want something a little bit more interesting go with one one of these metallic finishes for £750 or you could go the whole hog and get Bond Silver that's a matte finish for £1,100 and that'll make you feel like 007 behind the wheel of your G70 shooting brake. Let's touch on dimensions briefly because they're exactly the same as the G70 Saloon. It's shorter than its three main German rivals and it doesn't come as high but it is wider at 1,850 millimetres. This means it may be a little bit trickier to negotiate into those tight parking gaps and keep centred in a lane 
but its rear end isn't going to stick out as prominently on your driveway. While the side looks very similar to the G70 Saloon, the back boasts some unique design elements like this tailgate glass that extends into the roof and onto this floating rear spoiler. I also prefer the look of the shooting brakes quad lamp tail lights and the way that they stretch around onto the tailgate itself. Really nice design there. Up here on the rear spoiler, we have a high level brake light that extends across the entire width. The Genesis badging, it, well you can't miss it really, it's very prominently displayed and this is complemented by the mesh finish down here and the oval exhaust tips, completing this car's sporty look. Overall, from a visual point of view, I'm finding it hard to criticise. I think Genesis have absolutely smashed it out the park with the design of the shooting brake G70 and as a result it's one of the best looking estate cars on the market but let me know your thoughts down below in the comments guys. What I will say though is that while this is a car that's going to turn heads at the company car park it doesn't exactly scream family friendly practicality. So let's open up the boot now and check out how much stuff we can fit into the back. A wide opening tailgate was a priority for Genesis and I am impressed by how wide this load space is, making it easy to load those awkwardly shaped and sized items into the back here. In terms of litres, we're looking at 465, so that's 130 litres more than the regular G70 Saloon, but it's quite a bit less than what's offered by the A4 Avant and the Mercedes C-Class Estate that give you 490 litres and the 3 Series Tourings 490. 95 litres. Saying that, there's still an impressive amount of practicality on offer. There's nets on either side to keep those objects that like to roll around at bay. There's hooks towards the back to strap objects down. And there's a decent amount of underfloor storage, perfect for your tyre mobility kit, maintenance tools and other bits and bobs. So the boot space isn't as long or high as you'd find in equivalent premium estate car rivals. And I'm not a fan of this parcel shelf. It really restricts the amount of stuff you can pile high to take advantage of that maximum luggage capacity. So let's take it out and then you can get a good look at the overall boot space. So how many of these small carry-on luggage can we fit into the back? Well I reckon around five to six. As you can see though the loading lip's quite high so you're gonna have to lift this quite high to get it into the back. That might be a problem if you're coming back from the shops and you're lugging some heavy shopping bags. Gonna have to put those muscles to the test there. So yeah as you can see in there uh, slides in very comfortably you'll be able to fit five to six of those. This translates to two to three adult suitcases or a kid's bike with the wheel taken off. If you need to extend the boot capacity further, you can flick the levers on either side to fold down those rear seats in a 60-40 arrangement, but they are actually in a 40-20-40, so you can fold down that middle seat independently from the rest to slide objects through into the rear cabin space. But let's toggle those levers then. Seats fly down as they're spring-loaded and that gives you 1,535 litres to play with in total there, much more equivalent with rivals. And Genesis have done their best to prevent a gap in the floor with some material, so you'll find that those looser objects won't be falling down the side of the seats, so that's really nice. This 40-20-40 configuration comes as standard with the shooting brake model, unlike the regular G70 Saloon. And it's not even available with one of this car's key rivals, the Volvo V60. So overall, very impressed with the practicality of the boot space. So guys, if you'd like to find out more about how the shooting brakes boot space compares with the regular G70, then just click up there, click that pop-up banner to go and watch our in-depth review of the saloon. Okay then, it's time to get behind the wheel of the shooting brake where we test out the driving experience on our absolutely lovely UK roads. According to Genesis, this G70 shooting brake underwent exhaustive testing and development on Europe's most challenging roads, plus an evaluation on the legendary Nürburgring in Germany. Does this translate to the driving experience then? I'm pleased to say it does. This is a comfortable, refined, an engaging estate car to drive. Like the regular G70 Saloon, Genesis have kept the powertrain lineup pretty simple here as there's just one petrol and one diesel unit to choose from. This means there's no hybrid variant available in the shooting brake lineup as of yet. This is conspicuously absent, especially when you compare this car to its key rivals, the 3 Series Touring and C-Class Estate, both of which offer hybrid variants and it is a bit of a shame. Under the bonnet of this car, we have the petrol unit 
and it's exactly the same as the one you'd find with the regular G70 saloon. It's a two litre, four cylinder turbo plus unit, outputting 241 brake horsepower and 353 newton meters of torque for a fairly rapid 0 to 62 time of 6.4 seconds. Not too bad there for an estate car. That will allow you to easily build up speed to merge onto a motorway or dual carriageway and overtake slow moving traffic in the left lane. You get eight speed automatic transmission as standard, not only with this G70 shooting brake, but with all Genesis models in the, the UK lineup. And it's a highly refined transmission. It slides through the gears smoothly, rapidly, and precisely enabling those easy overtakes. I will also say that this is a pretty good city car, you know, for driving around town and nipping into those tight gaps, as there's hardly any, any hesitation from the gearbox. You just put your foot down on the accelerator and it's almost it's almost like driving an electric car, that instant hit of power enables you to just get off the block fairly quickly into those tight gaps. I will say though, if you are driving in a 60 mile an hour zone and fast approaching a 30 mile an hour zone, the car changes down instead of relying on the engine's torque and that can feel a little bit jarring at times. But other than that, this is one of the most refined automatic gearboxes I've come across in a new car. All G70 shooting brake models come with a rear wheel drive setup. There's no all wheel drive option available and this sets it apart from key rivals like the Volvo V60, which is front wheel driven, and the 3 Series Touring from BMW and the Audi A4 Avant, both of which can be had in all-wheel drive configurations. So if that is something that's important to you, you're going to have to look more towards those rivals. Adding to the engaging driving experience are the paddle shifters behind the steering wheel. Just toggle those, that will enable the manual mode, enabling more precise gear changes. One major complaint I had with the regular G70 saloon was the high CO2 output and the low fuel economy when compared to that car's rivals. Unfortunately, this is something that also plagues the shooting brake. So Genesis claims you can achieve up to 33.1 miles per gallon on the combined cycle. That's not great, especially when compared to this car's rivals. And just looking at my trip computer right now, it says I'm averaging 36.3. So that's a little bit more promising. That's higher than that claimed figure, though still falling short of say the 3 Series Touring and the C-Class Estate. Well, some variants of those cars anyway, especially the hybrid models. CO2 output can climb as high is 204 grams per kilometer as well and that makes it a particularly unappealing company car option for business users especially when they've got say the 330e from bmw and hybrid variants of the c-class estate that they can just consider instead to take advantage of generous benefit in kind tax savings if you're looking to maximize fuel economy without compromising on refinement then do consider that diesel engine option that's what we had under the bonnet of our regular g70 saloon review car and overall I was really impressed with it. It's a 2.2 litre four cylinder unit, it outputs 197 brake horsepower and 440 newton meters of torque for a 0 to 62 time of 7.7 .7 seconds so of course quite a bit slower than the petrol engine though that still enables rapid overtakes on faster roads. Uh, you get rear wheel drive and eight speed automatic transmission as standard much like the other models in the G70 lineup. Fuel economy is slightly improved with this diesel model. You can achieve up to 44.1 mpg on the combined cycle. Definitely better than that petrol variant, though not as good when you compare this to this car's rivals. And CO2 can climb as high as 186 grams per kilometer on the combined cycle. Still not a particularly tantalizing company car option. If the diesel driving experience is anything like I encountered with the regular G70 saloon, then I think you'd be impressed with what's on offer here. Uh, there's hardly any hesitation as you set off from a junction or traffic lights or a roundabout. It is fairly swift and I can't really say that's the case for a lot of diesel variants offered by its rivals. So yeah, this is definitely worth considering if you want to maximize fuel economy uh, for the G70 range. When it comes to the suspension, the Genesis engineers honed this to suit European roads and they also recalibrated the dampers slightly to accommodate the increased boot capacity out the back of this estate car without compromising on the precision and confident drive that the regular G70 saloon provides. 
Is this the case then? Well, yes, this uh, estate car feels very similar behind the wheel to the G70 Saloon, and that is a definite plus point. We have McPherson strut at the front and a multi-link setup at the back. Both of these work in combination to improve stability and performance, and this is certainly noticeable when you're negotiating around a tight corner or roundabout. The car holds itself in place very nicely, and there's minimal body lean, though it's not as engaging as, say, a 3 Series Touring. The issue I have with the suspension is when it comes to ride quality. At higher speeds, it's absolutely fine and it's quite subtle and pleasurable. It's just around town and country roads and B roads where you'll start to notice the impact of even the smallest undulations. And when you drive over aggressive humps and bumps and really precarious potholes, you do feel the impact of these resonate throughout the cabin as the car jolts and shutters and it's all quite uncomfortable. This is even the case in the car's comfort mode, which is designed to soften the ride quality for a more supple ride, but unfortunately the implementation here isn't particularly impressive. And when you've got the car in sport mode, that firms up the ride quality for a sportier driving feel, but as you go over humps and bumps, they are really noticeable and creates a lot of discomfort. So yeah, I do feel that the ride quality could have been improved with the G70. Let's talk about the pedals briefly. The accelerator is is spongy. I know that's not going to be to everybody's taste, but it's easy to gauge how much throttle you're giving the car. The brake pedal is nice and firm, just what you would expect from a vehicle of this class. It's made even beefier if you opt for the Sportline model for a more spirited drive. The steering is much lighter than I would expect from a 3 Series competitor, but it works nicely in combination with the rear wheel drive setup. There's a nice amount of feel and feedback from that configuration. When you swing this car around around a bend or a roundabout, it's pretty responsive. And around town, getting into and out of those tight gaps is pretty easy, as well as getting a full wheel lock to negotiate yourself out of a parking space is, is pretty nice as well. So it's optimized nicely for city and motorway driving. Wind noise is a complete non-issue with this G70 shooting brake. There's no bellowing coming from the mirrors or the side pillars or the front windscreen. It's all really nicely isolated. Road noise is a different issue in entirely and much of my issue stems with the problems that I have with the ride quality caused with the suspension. When you go over a sharp bump or pothole um, and the car starts to shut, of course you start to hear uh, road noise there. But even traveling faster, you know, cruising speeds on the motorway and you've got those larger 19 inch alloy wheels, road noise is pretty evident and as a result the car isn't as well soundproofed as the 3 Series Touring. I'm very impressed with the visibility on offer. You sit quite low down in the G70 shooting brake, though you get electric adjustment for the seats as standard and you can have yourself come up pretty high. I'm at the highest point right now because I love a commanding view of the road ahead in my cars and I'm certainly getting that. The windscreen is nice and large. Uh, the mirrors are wide as well and they come integrated with blind spot monitoring alerting you of cars passing closely on either the left or right hand side and the side pillars are really slim as well and they don't create much of a blind spot at junctions and traffic lights. I do have complaints with my over the shoulder view though it's quite restrictive that this is made up by the range of driver assistance features that come as standard with the shooting brake, including blind spot monitoring, front and rear parking sensors, and the rear view camera. Genesis says the car's stiff and robust body structure helps to provide that first class level of occupant safety that the brand very much prides itself on. Indeed, this car has been awarded the top marks by Euro NCAP and it's scored very highly in the adult occupant, child occupant, vulnerable road users, and safety assist categories. There's over 20 driver assistance systems available with the G70 shooting brake, including driver attention alert, autonomous emergency braking, lane keep assist, plus optional extras like the blind spot view monitor that displays on the digital instrument cluster behind the steering wheel here. When you indicate, it will show a view of your rear lateral blind spot. It's not a feature I've seen in many new models. Absolutely love it. I think I've seen it in the new Hyundai Ionic 5 and I'd like to see it in more new cars. Great feature. I also want to talk about the Genesis five-year warranty as this is something that sets this Korean brand apart from its German equivalents. So you get scheduled servicing covered for 50,000 miles or five years, whichever one comes first. When the car is ready to be serviced, Genesis will come pick it up and they'll drop it off at your door when it's done. And if you need a courtesy car during this time, that will all be arranged for you. You also get roadside assistance coverage during this period and that covers you for 24 hours a day 
365 days a year. It's a fantastic package, nearly as good as Kia's seven year warranty and is a definite advantage of choosing Genesis over, well, Audi, being Mercedes and BMW. Overall though, I'm very impressed with the driving experience that the G70 shooting brake provides. Let's park up now and examine the interior in a bit more detail. So I'm not going to go into too much detail here as the interior is essentially the same as the G70 Saloon, but it is impressively contemporary, minimalist and high quality. Good amount of material variety as well. I like the soft touches up here on the dash that's adorned with genuine stitching and I absolutely love the red for this. Down here in the center console, we've got nice use of chrome inserts. You'll find those on the doors as well. Down by the door bins, the plastic feels a little bit cheap and also up here around the side pillar. But other than that, it's a very well built cabin. Genesis wanted the front space here to feel like you're sitting in a fighter jet cockpit. Well, I haven't been in a fighter jet recently so I can't attest to that being the case. But I like how everything is very easily and clearly laid out. Uh, the dashboard here is slightly angled towards the driver. The buttons are nice and large. I can clearly see the driver display behind the steering wheel. You can just sit in your natural driver position and all those options and things that you wanna play around with they're really easy to see. Perforated leather for the steering wheel comes as standard and it feels very high quality. Very grippy as well. It feels like a BMW M Sport wheel and that's a very good thing indeed. There's electric adjustment for the wheel on the left hand side, where is it? There it is. <laughs> and that allows you to find a comfortable driving position as does the electric adjustment for the driver's seat that also comes as standard. The seats are very comfortable and supportive and they are available in a variety of soft quilted pattern, heated and ventilated ventilated options, including those with soft Nappa leather. That's what we've gone for. So we've got Sevilla red and obsidian black seats with red stitching. Look really effective. I personally wouldn't go for these myself as I'm not really a fan of uh, red interiors but it adds a really nice look to the cabin here. Lumbar adjustment for the driver's seat also comes as standard, unlike the three series touring. And you may want to pair that with a diesel variant if you intend on using the car for longer journeys, just to help alleviate any long-term back pain there. You also may want to consider opting for the comfort seat pack that set you back around £1,850 because you get side bolsters that come inwards towards you as you put the car into sport mode to prevent you from swaying around too much when going around corners. You also get a memory function so you can assign your preferred seating configuration to one of those buttons on the door. As standard, the driver display behind the wheel is eight inches in size, but if you upgrade with the innovation package, which is the car's tech pack, you get a much larger 12.3 inch 3D cluster. And the effect here is actually quite convincing. Um, if you have the opportunity to get behind the wheel of a Genesis model, I encourage that you do just so you can check out this feature for yourself because it is quite hard to communicate over video, but I really enjoy it. Perched atop the dashboard is the 10.25 inch Navi display and I'm impressed by how sharp the graphics are and how large those icons are as well. So they're really easy to see while on the go. But I want to highlight that this display is quite laggy in this review car. I don't know if it's just lagging behind a couple of software updates because it's something I haven't experienced with other Genesis models. As you slide between the displays, there's a little bit of lag there, and especially when you go into the map and start zooming in or out, it does have a little bit of latency to those controls. But yeah, it's something that I thought I'd highlight in this review. I have found it a little bit tricky to select options on the far left-hand side of the display while driving along though, finding myself to really stretching uncomfortably to select those, which isn't ideal. This would have been remedied by having a rotary dial down there in the center console to navigate the display while on the go. You'll find this in BMW models as well as the Genesis G80. So I'm not too sure why this wasn't implemented here. I love how logically the dashboard is laid out though. There's large shortcut buttons for the infotainment. And of course, I love how the climate controls are not incorporated into the display. Really easy to toggle and select while traveling from A to B. Down here in the center console, you get a couple of cup holders that nicely hold my bottle there. It's also a generous storage compartment that offers a USB port inside. Not USB-C though, that's a bit of a shame. Would have been nice to have seen that. The glove box is decently sized. Enough room for your manuals and other bits and bobs. But the door bins, a little bit disappointing, and this seems to be a running trend with Genesis models. They don't fit my large bottle of water. 
but they'd be absolutely fine for say a 250 mil bottle and like a magazine or something like that. So this shooting brake is the exact same size as its saloon sibling, but the boot is much larger. So it has that compromised room in the back for rear passengers. Let's go take a look. The answer is no. It's uh, disappointingly cramped in the back here and noticeably more so than in the saloon. Even with a driver of average height like me, as you can see, this is my seating configuration. The adult behind is going to struggle for knee room. So my knees are pretty high up and I've got next to no leg room to play with whatsoever. Headroom's okay though. So I'm 5'8". If you look up there, not too bad, got a bit of space to play with, though if you go with the optional panoramic sunroof, you can have that for around 900 pounds on top of your initial configuration. That's gonna trim a couple of centimeters off the roof lining, so do bear that in mind. The rear doors open fairly wide, around the same as the G70 saloon, but as you saw as I got into the back here, the roof line is quite low, so I had to dark, and that's gonna make it quite challenging to load those bulky kids seats and elderly relatives. There's no way I'm going to fit my bulky bottle in this minuscule door bin, but it will fit into this nice netting compartment on the back of the seat there. That fits quite snug. And I do like the individual air conditioning cluster for the rear here. And we can adjust the air intensity and you get a USB port as well. Genesis shouldn't really be calling this model a five seater. And I'll show you why as I attempt to slide over into the middle seat. It's easier said than done. Oh. Yeah, things are also very cramped here. I'm straddling a rather large central transmission tunnel, which means it's, I'm finding it hard to find spots for my feet. I'm gonna be invading the personal space of the other rear passengers, and my back isn't particularly supported by that middle seat. So yeah, this is definitely not where you wanna be for those longer journeys. But overall guys, good interior, especially that front space with the advanced technology, logically laid out dash and use of high quality materials. But let's dive into trim levels now. Here are my three highlights from each of the variants. Premium line models start from 35,320 pounds. And for that, you get this 10.25 inch Navi display with a DAB radio, Bluetooth, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all the stuff you need really. 40, 20, 40 split back folding seats and an electric rear tailgate, no manual labor required. Mid-range luxury line models start from £40,300 and you get lots of heated stuff like a heated steering wheel and heated front seat and a premium air filter. Top spec sport line models will set you back £41,480 and you get a sportier, more dynamic look to the exterior design, red Brembo brake calipers on those larger 19 inch alloy wheels. For more details on the trim levels, get in touch with our team via the link in the description below. Right then, should you buy, lease or finance a Genesis G70 shooting brake? Well, there's an awful lot to like here. It's not only more practical than its saloon sibling, but it's more attractive with gorgeous coupe styling, which may be enough to tempt you more towards this model than its mainstream alternative. It's also just as fun to drive as the regular G70 and nearly as fun as the 3 Series Touring, which is a mean feat indeed, considering this is a significantly more affordable model. It's also better equipped than the 3 Series Touring, coming with a wealth of comfort and driver assistance systems that are locked behind high spec grades and optional packs with the 3 Series range. I really like the interior and the high quality materials and infotainment setup, plus the five year Genesis warranty and the five star safety rating for this car serve to complete what is a very solid premium car package. Some of the downsides are significant though. The high CO2 output and low fuel economy mean customers looking for the next company car are gonna be tempted more towards hybrid variants from German competitors. Plus, why isn't there a hybrid option in this engine lineup? We only get one petrol and one diesel. That's pretty limited for a UK specification 
location. And I do need to highlight that the rear space is pretty tight. Even though we've got lots of boot space to work with, your rear passengers are gonna be pretty uncomfortable for those longer journeys. But overall, I really enjoyed my time with this shooting brake model. If you're after something that's a bit different from the German rivals and has its own distinct character, and it's gonna turn heads as you do the supermarket shop, then you'll find a lot to love here. But what you'll love even more are the excellent special offers on Genesis models that we have available. So to explore those in more detail, get in touch with OSV's vehicle specialists on 01903 538 835, or you can click the pop-up banner up there to book a date or time for a chat that best works for you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the review, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for the latest comprehensive car reviews. And once you are subscribed, click the notification bell because you're gonna get notified as soon as a new video goes up on the channel. But that's it. Thanks for watching. I've been Tom from OSV. Safe driving.